So now our next couple of lectures are going to talk about community capacity building. So the first lecture here is about improving health through community organization and community building. So what is community building? Well, communicate community organization is a process by which groups organize together. They do this through identifying collective goals or problems, um, resources and strategies for a intended outcome. They use an approach to create healthy institutions and communities, and they do this through empowerment, participation, and through relevance. So we also look at community building through complement community organization. Um, this process is strength-based and community-centered, so you find out what are your strengths of your community, and then you find out exactly what the community needs. We do this through assessment, and then we develop our organization strategies around those strengths and around those communities. We'll do some activities this week on how we measure strengths and how we find out what the community's needs are. And we do this in order to create a caring and stronger community. Um, some of the concepts include common orientation. What is it that throughout the community is common? Um, for East Texas, that may be religion is the common identifier. Or a common theme may be the value of family. So that's what you look for. You look for member identification. So who do you have demographic-wise, and what are their shared assets? And again, we'll talk about different ways to identify what those are. So the importance of community organization and building. Well, the reason this is so important is because it influences social system and structures. By doing community organization and building, we help make change happen. We create healthier institutions and healthier communities. Um, community involvement sustains through the social fabric. This, If you involve the community, then new policy and new change is more likely to last. Um, you have sustained health behavior change that is contingent on change on a societal level and through a supportive environment. So in the context of health education, community organization starts with felt needs. So again, what the community feels is important. And then you look at the relevance to that community, how much participation you're going to get, how to gain participation, and how will it empower the community. Empower means in give the community an ability to feel as if they can make a difference and as if they can take that on. And an emphasis on community partnerships and community-based health initiative. So again, this is based on community people coming together in a partnership and doing it based on community change. So what is the concept of community? So we're going to break it down simple. So there's three different kinds of ways we can look at a community. The first is what we call the ecological system perspective. This is the physical features of the environment. What are the geographic boundaries? What is the population characteristics? This is looking at what we actually see. Is it mountainous? Is it flat? Is it rural? Is it urban? And then we have the social system perspective, the organizations and social components in the environment. This is where religion comes in. Um, this is where cultures come in. This is where belief systems, the South have, has a much different belief system than the North. Um, if you look at Alabama's belief system and then you go to New York, it's going to be a very different social system perspective. Cyberspace, what are the online communities that are available that has no physical limitations to them? Then we look at historical perspectives. So in the 1800s, coordination of service was disenfranchised, which means that it just didn't occur on a mass scale. 
And then in the post-reconstruction period, there was a practice by African Americans to salvage their newly won rights. So this is where they came together for a common goal. And then we had the populist movement, which was a rise from agrarian revolution to become multi-sectoral coalition and political forces. This is where we had groups meeting up with their own beliefs and this is where we get like the political groups and so forth that have, have really come along. And then by 1950 there was a stressed conflict strategy to redress power imbalance and broader objectives such as civil, gay and disability rights, women's rights. And then in the 1980, there was newer tactics, such as computer technology and building online communities, identifying and organizing support on a mass scale and on broad issues such as HIV, which was the big push in the 80s as far as um, organizing support towards um, agenda. And then there's some long-standing and new models. Rothman's 2001 model is, is known as the model for community health and then we'll look at that in just a second and then there's three topologies which are considered community-based and problem-based those include locality development um, social planning and social action planning and we'll talk about those in a little bit of detail so new community building models so there's a community center strength-based model that model again is community-centered and based on their strengths, it's just what it says. And then there's a collaborative empowerment, which is empowerment by um, people coming together for a cause. And then groups history, identification, and autonomy is included in all their different developmental stages. Participation and empowerment occurs on multiple levels. You can't just come in and go right off the top. You have to start in a baby step process. And then for consideration, effective community organization and community building strategies have to start where the people are, not where you want them to be. So it needs to be based on the group's history, their members, their skills, their risk taking, and their comfort level with the methodology you're taking. Let me give you an example. So if I wanted to go into a community and I wanted to target teen pregnancy, in Camp County and Titus County, we have some of the highest pregnancy rates in the state which is, is scary, but I promise you I cannot go into Camp County or Titus County and say, I want to talk about um, sex prevention, using condoms, spermicides, Plan B, all the different methods that are out there to prevent um, an unwanted pregnancy. They're going to want you to preach abstinence. In Texas alone, that's the target. You are not allowed to do sex education on sexual prevention without talking about abstinence. They want you to promote that as the only way. Well, we know through literature, we know through history, and I, this is why I'm doing this here and not in class, but we know through history and through research that that does not work. Promoting just abstinence does not work in a, an adolescent's environment. So. But again, that is part of community organization and community building strategies. You would have to start with abstinence and then as they see that change not occurring to the level that they need, then you slowly incorporate things that they are comfortable with. So we're going to look at this model. Um, this is a model of what we call um, community building and capacity. And it just kind of shows you how you have the strength-based approaches and your need-based approaches. You have the consensus and you have those that are conflicting and how they all interlock. And you do this through grassroots organ organization, organizing through coalitions. Coalitions are groups of people that come together, lay health workers, which are what a CHW is, leadership development, and then critical awareness and reflection, building community identity, political and le legislative actions, and cultures that are relevant to practice. And this is how you make change occur. It's a complicated model that just shows you all the different factors that go into making community change. 
So some of the key concepts of these models, the concepts all interrelated and interactive. They include empowerment. This is getting people on the lowest level involved and making them feel as if they have the ability to make a difference. Through community capacity and social capital. So what social capital is what they actually have tangible that they're going to gain from this process and the community's capacity to be able to make a difference by choosing the right issue, the right amount of participation, and making sure that it's relevant to the group. Regardless of what model you use, all that is something that's going to be common. So what is empowerment by definition? A social action processes by which individuals, communities, and organizations gain mastery over their lives by changing social or political environments to improve equity and quality of life. And we're going to talk about um, the difference between equity and equality in class. We're going to do an exercise. Empowerment includes participation, control, and critical awareness. It, it's multi-layered. It it's, has many processes and outcomes. It's multi-leveled. It can occur on an individual basis, on a community basis, and an organizational basis. And it includes community capacity and leadership. There has to be strong leadership in, in order for empowerment to occur. So what is community capacity? It, it has the ability to identify and mobilize assets for change. Um, the community competencies that are needed is your social capital. Okay, what are you going to gain from that? Your social networking, your critical consciousness, how aware are you of the issue and where you stand, and leadership development. And you, This is very important. You're going to have to develop leaders in the community to help take this on. Issue selection, participation, and relevance. You have to, again, say this from the beginning, you have to start where the people are. It has to be a winnable, talk, you know, uh, issue. It has to be simple. It has to be specific. And it has to be something that is unifying. So, again, let's talk about teen pregnancy. Everyone in the community can come together and unify on the fact that teen pregnancy is an issue. They may not unify on the fact that we need to talk about condoms, but they can unify on the fact that something's got to be done about teen pregnancy. So method, methods for issue selection, um, what we call dialogical problem solving, problem solving through having conversations and figuring out what that issue is through talking it out um, and then separating it into themes, focus groups, surveys, and what we call photo voice. So there's some critiques around computed community building and capacity building. So issue selection and power controls. Who has control over the issues? This is a hard thing to determine. And we'll do some root cause analysis and some sheets to kind of talk about how to figure that out. But really identifying who has the control over the issue is always a very hard thing to determine. And how do we frame the problem? The way I, my perspective is of a problem may not be the same as somebody else's perspective of the problem. And how you frame the problem is going to be really important on determining how you're going to target that. How do we evaluate processes and outcomes? How do we measure? How do we make sure something's reliable and, reliable and valid? That's a very hard thing to do in, in determining what are our desired outcomes. That can be a hard thing for a whole group to come together as one on. So internet influences. The internet influences many of this. So a lot of it is the definition of what the community is, the community's shared interests and concerns, the data collection and information dissemination. Um, it could be a powerful research tool, tool, and it is the challenges of the divide. Lack of real discussion and development occur when you're doing a lot online and so you want to use the internet but make sure that it's not taking place of you being actually in the community 